Though admittedly, I did forget to two switch inputs. A terrible, terrible crime, I know. Alright. So let's go to the special world, because that's where we need to be now. Alright, everything's set up. Let's go. Silencio in the library. We're here for real this time. Despite what that rainbow shell may, might, may want me to be. The five gods of Peridia. Nova, the god of space. Paradox, the god of time. Ressa, the god of life. Niskira, the god of dimensions. Maverick, the god of will. The gods restricted their own power in this realm after the great deity war. However, after Niskira's recent invasion, it is believed that these restrictions have been severely weakened. Stupid. Disco shell. We have options that are severely curtailed by the fact that I definitely need. Behold my... <laughs> Behold as my resub. Notification brings up a randomly unrelated message from this level. <laughs> Thank you, Kappa. Always a joy. And what's up, Matt? How you doing? Uh, 20 month streak. Damn, that is a long time. Are you back in uh, normal? Cause what would normal time zones be? The normal European time zones now, Matt? Or are you still in uh, Eastern time? Maybe I shouldn't try to be clever here and just go for it. <laughs> doing good? Oh, excellent. I'm doing fine, too. Spent uh, today swearing at a programming environment that is actually kind of annoying. Um, trying to figure out how to do a thing, but otherwise, perfectly content. Brazilian time now? All right. Did I manage to beat the final boss? I did, in fact, manage to beat the not entirely final boss. How you doing, Max? Last uh, Wednesday, I believe it was, I actually did, in fact, beat... Or... No, Monday. Monday, I actually did beat the, uh, the helmet, the bucket boss. But there, but of course, there's more. So we're trying to find out about that right now. Here is one or two plus DST. Yeah, that's true. Um, I'm used to thinking of the UK as being uh, plus eight for my location, depending upon time of year with DST, but. What a shame. There might have been lives up there. I couldn't quite tell. Bean Bean Castle. I do not know anything about Bean Bean Castle, I must confess. Either way, it's good to be back uh, back home using my standard setup, sitting on my standard couch. <laughs> it's the name of the song, it plays in the same name place, Luigi Superstar Saga, okay. And yes, thank you for the <laughs> wisdom dork, how you doing? Yeah, it's nice to be back. The Lost Deity. Some scholars suggest that there are... Um, some scholars suggest that there, there was a sixth god. That seems wrong. Uh, there probably... Why is there two theirs? Uh, was sixth god Destrasia. Don't care if I get that one wrong. It is believed that there is other gods uh, stripped her of her status following a betrayal... 
What she did is unknown, but many believe that she sowed the seeds of discord in humanity. Very heiress of her. <laughs> there, there, indeed. But no, it's it's good. I had a fun time. Um, you know, I didn't do as much stuff as I wanted, but I still had fun celebrating my brother's birthday. Took him and his kids out to, uh, to <laughs> him and his family, kids and wife and all that, out to a nice place. Ate a shit ton of meat. Because that's the kind of place it was. And, uh, yeah, I got to go to California Extreme. Got to play a prototype of Marble Madness, which unfortunately sucks. Or, not Prototype of Marble Madness. Marble Madness 2. Ow. So in Seed of Discord, at least sow your own seeds. Uh, fair enough. That was, like, the worst part to fuck up to. Yeah, yeah, California Extreme was fun. Played some pinball machines. Several I've played before. Kind of missed the local whitewater machine. But it was nice to play it uh, out and about. A few others. Had some fun playing Tetris the Grandmaster. It's one of those things that I would consider actually trying to be good at at some point. If, you know, I was willing to pay that much money for a machine. Except for the fact that I don't have to do that. Turns out that the OG Tetris the Grandmaster runs on PlayStation hardware, and, uh, well, that sucks. It's, uh, trivial to convert one of the binaries for that into something that a PlayStation can run, and since I have the PlayStation flashcard thing, I actually have a copy of Tetris the Grandmasters that will work. So. But given how I performed at the arcade show, I wouldn't say I did terribly well. Never quite got past the 200 barrier. I'm not ready to be a Grandmaster yet. But still, truly excellent Tetris game, if you ever have a chance to play it. As long as the joystick's okay. The joystick at the uh, arcade show was kind of crap. But it was on a candy cab, so you never know what you're going to get with those machines. Yeah, PlayStation Flashcart is not the best way to describe it, because it effectively plugs into the serial port of some earlier PlayStation revisions, but I don't have a better way to express what it is. Because that's what it is. It's, it's a PlayStation Flashcart. Um, it takes ISOs or bins and queues, and... This level... seems wrong. What the hell's up with this? Um, and then you play them without having to burn them to a disc. Like, it, it's effectively a flash cart, even if that particular nomenclature doesn't make a whole lot of sense. breath here. This definitely is not a level worthy of doing that for. Alright, so you get the key and then you can go into many different places. As long as the comet doesn't hit you. I, for one, do not want to be hit by the comet cursor. take this key all the way up here. Well, if I've taken this key all the way up here for no reason, I'm going to feel like quite the chump. Oh. Uh. Well then, I think I need more key. I need to double grab this. 
mistakes were made. Mistakes were severely made. It might not be possible to key jump in this. Does the flashcard have its own disk that you need to run for it to read the port? No. Um, it does something at boot that boots itself into its own PlayStation program. I cannot begin to explain exactly how it works. But it does not require doing a uh, CD boot of any type. Hmm, must have been... I can't spin jump on these, right? Yes, I can. I'm gonna stab the puppies, because I don't want to deal with them. Gotta go, it's almost 5 a.m. Alright, see you some other day. Probably more often when you're back in, uh, Portugal. But the time zones aren't so terrible when I stream compared to Brazil. But I uh, hope you sleep well. Or don't, you know. It's your choice. Ah, okay. I see how this level works now. Let's try out one of the paths I haven't taken yet. I get the feeling coming back is going to be happening. It's arguably worse because it's eight hours. Yeah, but the eight hours makes it like in the morning, right? Oh. It's not quite as bad, arguably, in the morning as it is way late at night. Because, like, I'm, what, 3 a.m. versus 8 p.m.? Or 8 a.m.? I don't know. It could be worse, all I'm saying. It's gonna be terrible sleeping. I understand that. Very much so. But anyways, yep, sleep well, as well as you can. And I hope that that's not a harbinger of more hiccups. Because there's nothing I hate more on stream than having the hiccups. In fact, I can't remember the last time I had them in real life, and it wasn't on stream. Huh. Yeah, definitely hate having the hiccups. Uh, four versus eight. Yeah, I still feel like eight's got to be better than four. All I'm saying. There we go. All right. Well, I'm still doing way too much damage per section if this is how I'm playing it. If I have to pass out, but... <laughs> Oh, what's up, Havaluta? Hope you're doing well. I was definitely thinking about, uh... Scheduling more of Magic Circle in the near future. I gotta figure out what my weekend looks like. I keep getting confused with the next weekend, which will be much busier, and the following weekend, which will be insanely busy. Um... But aside from I want to watch the Desiathon, especially when he plays Oregon Trail, I have no major constraints, so I might uh, contact you a bit about that later. And, of course, Kalrassi for more Monkey Islanding, because I do, in fact, enjoy some good Monkey Islands. At some point, I'll remember to turn those off. Yes, thank you for pointing that out. Let me... How you doing, Faro? Uh, let me reset the game, just in case. Oregon Trail or Oregon Trail? Well, I'm pretty sure that's a regional dialect sort of thing, you know, like steamed hams. So it could really be either. Uh, maybe she looks okay in blue. We'll just go with this for the time being. I know that, uh, since Eevee told me that, uh, this particular game does not use Graphics 32, I probably shouldn't worry too much. But yeah. 
Next time I die, I'll uh, give it a proper reset, and hopefully that will fix things. Actually, yeah, I'll just do the thing where it coalesces. That'll be the smart move. And then remember to turn the damn thing off. But yeah, Oregon Trail for DOS, which wasn't the OG version of Oregon Trail, bizarrely enough. The OG version is for Apple II. Or Apple. Some sort of Apple that only did, like, green monochrome. So. Which, I feel like the Mister should be able to emulate in the grand scheme of things, because it is basically a 6502 with stuff. Um, which is effectively what this Nintendo is. It's a 6502 with stuff. So it's not all that different in the grand scheme of emulation. You just need to change your I.O. port numbers and probably your, like, loading uh, address. I doubt Oregon Trail had much in the way of copy protection, but worst comes to worst, you get the one out of the 2AM collection and it'll be fine. Yeah, I don't like this particular uh, direction here. What's a mister? Okay, so a mister is an FPGA console, sort of an omni FPGA console. It does many different consoles while being a single FPGA system. And so Desi's been using it for uh, like his NES stuff and presumably other consoles, though I don't think I've ever caught him playing a different console at this point in time. He's mostly been on an NES uh, jam for a while. But conceptually, it's just an FPGA that has configuration that allows it to emulate a large number of systems. With slightly lower uh, latency because, again, FPGA emulation generally tends to be a little bit better than emulating on your own CPU environment. This feels like a secret. This better not be another damn key. Interesting. It looks like <laughs> this thing you picked up is some sort of special relic. Judging by the energy readings, it will make special platforms appear to you. Out and about. Maybe there are more of these out on, to find on your travels. Reminds me, I need to uh, grab the list of places these special relics are found that Evie sent me that I completely forgot to make into a list I could look at while on stream. But thank goodness my uh, secret detect went off there, I suppose. But yeah, it can do a lot of different things, which is somewhat surprising to me. Uh, one of them being DOS games, which is a bit of a shocker. Um, I guess there's no reason it couldn't do DOS. Just a general, oh, I don't know, didn't know it could. All right, I need to die here, don't I? Well, you know, I think I can die here pretty easily on, in the grand scheme of things. And getting all five gems before dying doesn't matter because it's... Oh. Well, I got all five of them. Can I get up into the, uh, other, did the K-19 section? can't actually get P-Speed here. Nope. Yeah, I don't think I can actually do that. That's probably for the best. How is it different from a Raspberry Pi? It's different from Raspberry Pi because it's using an FPGA. A Raspberry Pi is running software compiled for ARM to emulate various systems, and FPGA is actually emulating the hardware at a closer to... Oh god, she does not look good in these colors. Um, closer to the metal sort of thing. You're actually trying to meet memory timings and stuff, which is not necessarily the case with a software emulator. But I, not owning an, a mister, couldn't tell you what the exact uh, details are. Beyond, it is slightly different. And being a person who generally likes to use the uh, 
real hardware when possible. It's, uh, yeah, probably reasonable. All right, level clear. Let's reset this really quick, just in case the colors actually matter. <laughs> and thank you for the GG. I do enjoy my, I do enjoy the cat orb, or corb, as some of the cool kids call it. This should coalesce properly, and I won't have to re-upload it. <laughs> Got real hardware I can use. Thank you, Desi. Uh, how are you doing? Let me fix this thing that we were fixing. There we go. And move along. In fact, I was literally just talking about you, to be honest. <laughs> Discussing the mystery. I am looking forward to the... Uh... Oh, plot. One sec. Zeria, whoa, this place looks hot. I'm seeing it through the feed, and even I'm getting a uh, sweaty. I hope you brought some water. Gee. Hmm. I can also see some geysers up ahead. Maybe they can propel you upwards. It sounds stupidly dangerous, but hey, it also sounds super fun. Can I hear that? I uh, was looking forward to, if I read the votes right, um, Oregon Trail sometime on, uh, on the 6th. Because I am a fan of Oregon Trail as my lengthy monotone Tim <laughs> subscription should demonstrate. <laughs> so. But yeah, I'm just uh, feeling pretty good. Getting some things done, contemplating things. Got my YouTube tasks done for the week, more or less. I probably should do a few more after the stream. Nope. Oregano Trail. Got my recovery there. Oh. I should have gone low first. Damn it. Oregano? Never heard of that seasoning. Oh, right. I think if I come here with K19, she could destroy those. Or, or 16? I was, oh, never mind. It's on off blocks. Never mind. I should really remember what the characters in this game are called, because I'm terrible at it. Beyond Sakari. Hey, in there. I've been working like crazy for the big event this weekend. You've sucked up so much time and I haven't been able to stream. Had so many issues come up with hardware and most of it's resolved. That's good. One big one remains. Had to invest a lot of money and equipment, too. Can't wait to get back to work. It's been stressful. No doubt. No doubt. Out of curiosity, what was the, the hardware problem? As my character explodes. I saw that Jazz Jackrabbit is unlikely to occur, which made me a bit sad, but honestly, in terms of, like, tech stuff, it's probably for the best. Given its, uh, Pascal nature. Not sure what I thought would happen there, but I certainly didn't think that. One more. Steb. I can once again attest that I am looking forward to this weekend. I will definitely be hanging out for at least a, a chunk of that. Especially because some of the other, like, Mario games. I'm curious to see how, uh, how Sunshine plays with you. Which I find to be an eminently frustrating game in the grand scheme of things. Uh, and Galaxy, because Galaxy's just a good game. Like, everybody should play Galaxy because it's just that damn good. That's my belief. For now. That is. For now. Ooh, a sign.
Did I run through lives that quickly? No. Huh. Because I wasn't paying attention. Which also means I can't test the midway. Mistakes were made. Sometimes stebbing just isn't fast enough. I want a new knife. A better knife. Possibly some sort of butter knife. Eh. Playing everything on console, hopefully, and most of the Wii and GameCube games weren't working. Also need to figure out how to use the AO486 core on Mister, which worked okay for Oregon Trail, but Lemmings did not work at all. Playing Lemmings on the Amiga core instead. Oh, that's fair. Need to learn how to change the sensitivity on the mouse. Completely reasonable. I actually think with, with uh, Lemmings, that's... that Was the Amiga the OG for that? Like, uh, Lemmings was made by the same company that eventually became, like, Rockstar North. And so Amiga is not unreasonable for that. I would say worst comes to worst, use uh, DHTML Lemmings, but I know the fact for a fact that uh, your PC capture stuff is is not as uh, workable as your game capture. You know, I didn't think this through. Mistakes were made. Signosis, thank you. But yeah, they eventually, I think, became Rockstar North, if I'm not mistaken. And being a European company, it would not surprise me if, like, PC DOS was not their native tongue. So. Recall that the uh, EU. Developers often prefer the Commodore 64 and other PC-like things. People like the Amiga. I don't think I ever played much with one beyond, like, capturing some screenshots for uh, Moby games, but... And of course it was an emulator, so it doesn't really count. But it seemed like an adequate system. Not good, not bad, just fine. If I'm not mistaken, like, uh, Xenon 2 Mega Blast also had the Amiga as its, uh, sort of default system. And in fact, sounded a ridiculous amount better than the DOS version, which was trying to use, um, the PC speaker to handle some of its synth stuff. Which was ridiculous, let's be honest. again, and not getting hurt by the Doritos hot tacos. Let's do a loop. I don't know why, but this suddenly reminds me of the uh, Special World level from DK. Donkey Kong Country 2, where you have to use the bar the timed barrels, and it's like the only level that really uses that particular mechanic. Definitely reminds me of it. I was kind of hoping it jumped the other way. PS2 still needs to be modded. We spent weeks working on it. First, the cable you bought a year ago was faulty and to replace it, and then you had to need to buy a new PS2 controller. It was so expensive, and you tried to do that. Soft mod didn't work. A friend sent you a formatted memory card that came in yesterday. Check the soft mod. It did not recognize the hard drive being in the PS2. 
So you need to order a new adapter for the PS2, you're really stressed. Fair enough. New adapter should arrive tomorrow, the day before the event. Yeah, Desi likes to do a charity thing every year, and this one is, is occurring on the 6th. My time zone. And his time zone, because he's in a similar time zone. Texas is uh, central, if I'm not mistaken. for like half a second there. Oh, thanks, I hate it. <laughs> what uh, PS2 games are on the docket? I guess I didn't look too carefully. Wouldn't surprise me if I guess Crash or something. Is there a glitch right before loading the level? I gotta check that. But yeah, the, uh, the PS2 takes soft modding pretty well. Uh, and the, one of the fun things about PS2 controllers is they can use PS1 controllers. Uh, PS2s can use PS1 controllers, but if you don't have one of those, it doesn't help either. Ran into this problem earlier when I was testing something. It was like, my start button stopped working on my PS1 controller. So I looked up online. It turns out, yeah, PS2 controllers work just fine for PS1 and vice versa. Provided you don't need the like extra button. If you need the extra button, you're kind of screwed. <laughs> but, you know. I actually don't know about vice versa. I think about it. Hmm. Might only be a One Direction implication. Yeah, I already got that. I don't need to get it again. Definitely close to the end. Just this part scares me because I have to do it kind of carefully. Nope. Oh, Shadow of the Colossus. Okay, that makes sense. I've never played it, but I have heard nothing but reverence for it. So I hope that that'll be a good time. holding jump there? Yes, yes I am. I wonder if the issue with the loading is because it's loading the uh, the particle on layer three, uh, the particle thing on layer three. Slightly miffed. Clear that. Trying to rush, it's not good for me. Gotta take it slow. Maybe not quite that slow. Do I get boosted as high without? I don't know if I get boosted at all without it being held, honestly. Let's find out. We have a less deathly spot that we can do some science at. Definitely seems like I still get propelled pretty high up without uh, holding B. I think I'm just being a little bit off from where it wants me to be. But, yeah. I think I definitely need to be right on top of it or else it does not like me. And so much for the theory that if I'm off screen, it won't hurt me. Ow. All right, actually, this is the perfect spot for science. 
Yep, definitely makes a difference holding B or not. Especially because I initially considered, initially thought that I got no boost without holding B. Which is definitely not correct. So. But also not mandatory before this moment. Deb the taco. Close, but incorrect. But, uh, but yeah. Definitely considering playing some more of that Tetris game. It's a good game. Since I have it. It's one of like the three games I actually already have on the, uh, the little flash drive. The little flash drive. No cigar indeed. Though I have learned that in times past, cigars were used as a treatment for asthma for some reason. The Teddy Roosevelt book that I've been listening to has definitely taken some odd turns. It spent like th two hours talking about asthma. It was awful. And this is me listening to it on like a uh, time and a half. 1.5 times speed. As I've eventually gotten accustomed to. For, uh, for most audiobooks. Unless it actually like has decent... Um, musical interludes, in which case it sounds horrible. I was listening to a, like, uh, audible original book about kids going to a musical magic school, and the musical interludes sounded terrible until I reduced the sound rate back down to uh, 1x. Which makes sense. They were doing, like, pitch correction stuff. So which will not sound good with music. Especially when I know the pieces. Yeah, okay. Knew it. Yeah, the other thing that was a bizarrely long detour in the Teddy Roosevelt book um, was one about taxidermy that got into an awful lot of an, uh, anatomy details that I definitely didn't ever want to know about taxidermy. So. Thank you for the GGs. Let's actually go to the spooky level where the cats grow spikes. Okay. That happens sometimes. Sometimes cats just need to grow spikes. I could have recovered if I jumped off the right side, but whatever. Gotta get my elbow in the right spot. Intriguing. I can, in fact, kill those using the Witch Beam. Probably should do more of that since, you know, Witch. He's blue, that means I can't hurt him. There's a taxidermy in every details, and you're like, go on. Taxidermy, yeah, no. No, I'm not going to discuss the details of that. Teddy Roosevelt uh, once spent a summer on the Nile, and apparently shot everything he could see. Which, admittedly, was an awful lot more since he had just gotten his spectacles that uh, particular summer. Uh, and then he proceeded to taxidermy it for the purposes of his own, like, natural mu- Uh, crap. I didn't expect to land on there. Uh, natural Science Museum. So. Altogether very weird, but, you know, around the time it kind of makes sense. Kind of. Maybe. I don't know.
it's definitely a weird period in, uh, in American history. I will, I will grant that regardless. And nope, there's a ceiling there. Sort of Marissa flashbacks right there. I was briefly terrified. Cool, I can jump on the blood cells. Did not want to get boned. I mean, it's been an interesting book, aside from the lengthy detours about asthma. Um, and taxidermy. There's an awful lot more Teddy Roosevelt than I ever had actually expected. I didn't know he was a Harvard grad, for one. That being the part I'm presently at in the book. Well, he's at Harvard. He apparently was writing a book about, uh, what was it? I think it was Fish. I forget. But yeah. Definitely looking forward to moving to something non- not- not non-fiction-y afterwards. I think I've had enough non-fiction for a bit. I said one about art that I wanted to listen to, but I might delay that. The book I was gonna read about architecture seemed really interesting, but reading it on my phone was completely and utterly unpleasant. Because I couldn't read the diagrams on my phone all that well. So I gave up on that. I decided to read a uh, light novel. It's been a while since I've tried to catch up on this one. I figured it wouldn't hurt to start from the beginning because it's not all that long when you get down to it. Being that most light novels are not that long. Anything queer about him? Um. I'm thinking. I don't know about. Yeah, I don't think queer is the right word. Or at least not the correct word in our current context. Dang it. Um, you know, he mostly talked about, especially when he was at Harvard, the women he was courting. Um, the only, like, weird thing, if we're going to use that definition of queer, was definitely uh, how much he relied upon one of his sisters. Um, and he was definitely a bit of a mama's boy. And a papa's boy, to be honest. His dad was also pretty big in the world. He, yeah... Weird intersection with another book I was reading, the one about James Garfield. Uh, Conkling, guy who ran the New York um, political machine, um, basically backed uh, Chester A. Arthur for the position of uh, New York Port Inspector or whatever the hell it was. I forget exactly the precise definition. Um, but apparently Teddy Roosevelt's dad was also in the running for that job. Um, and barely missed it by dying. Um, which, I, not not the best way to lose a job, I'll be honest. He apparently had some sort of um, colon cancer. At least that's what people seem to think in the future. Since that wasn't a thing people thought about in the 1800s. But yeah, I, I don't have any. I don't think there's any. Nothing I've come across so far interesting is queer. He was a bit of a dandy uh, at Harvard. He had his own horse, which apparently was something not heard of. Um, just uh, the way that a uh, New Yorker, like New York aristocrats, worked was just a bit differently. They worked differently than uh, Boston aristocrats. So. Apparently, Boston aristocrats simply thought that was beneath them and didn't have things like uh, maids, but New Yorkers did. I don't know. My notion of Teddy Roosevelt was always one of more of the Wild West and, uh, you know, rough riding and all that stuff. But definitely a different view upon him, given his childhood and how basically you know, American arist uh, aristocracy in some ways. Like, very much born into wealth, which is something I did not actually know. I'm definitely looking forward to the parts where he does more interesting things than write books about birds that he shot, to be honest. 
which I know were coming. He did participate in the Spanish-American War, which admittedly was a bit of a farce um, in so many ways. But at least that part has to be interesting, right? Or Franco-American War, whichever one, whichever one we blame the main on. Uh, the main on. No, not Franco. No, it's got to be Spanish. We blame the main on Spain. There we go. Progress. I've also been thinking about, um... Thank you for the GG. About Zelda's second quest. What I want to do for that. Um, I might have asked this when you requested it, but... Is it ba that bad to do the second quest before doing the first one? Like, I feel like coming with no knowledge, or limited knowledge, won't hurt me that badly, given I wouldn't know where most of the things were anyway. Like, most of the knowledge I have about Zelda 1 comes down to things Fistbit has complained about uh, ridiculously in past years. Uh, which means it's basically reduced to mostly code. As opposed to game design or anything else of the like. Yeah, no, it was definitely a surprise to me. Creature are these things? They're bombs. Everything makes a lot more sense now that I know they're bombs. Now the question I have is how do I get up there? Highly recommend first quest that's easier and shorter. Okay. Hmm. I'll need to figure out how to handle your request then, Desi, since you did request second quest. So I'm either going to need to play first quest first or just... Go for it. <laughs> I might play around with some ideas for integrations. I'm, yet, I'm not sure about that yet. I have time to figure that out, I think. But... I am curious... Well, actually, I know that uh, Zelda 1 uses MMC3 as well, so I guess that won't actually help me in any way, shape, or form. Try second quest one day, only done first one once. Seems reasonable to me. Especially since I learned that you can invoke the second quest without having beaten the first one. Intriguing. I'm not sure what I expected to find up here, but a key definitely wasn't it. completely and utterly lost my train of thought now that I'm thinking about this key. And then the thing that clearly is indicating I want to use the springboard here. Not to play first quest, but it's like learning to ride a bike without having training wheels first. When you're a kid, you start with second quest. You love second quest, but it's brutal. Well, I beat Zelda 2. Maybe I can... Maybe, maybe, yeah. I may need to negotiate with you, Desi. We'll, we'll, we'll see. I have to finish up uh, Monkey Island 2 and Magic Circle first, which I think will both take a little bit less time. But we will see. Play first quest on Hyrule Fantasy FDS so the difficulty will be balanced out. Oh my. Zelda 2 is way easier. That was not what I was hoping to hear, Desi. Uh, I did get around to watching a speedrun of Zelda 2. I had a lot of time while waiting for things to compile yesterday. Um, for reasons I don't want to get into. But. Well, that was kind of cool. I guess I wiggled him into the top of the screen. I wonder if you do it in regular vanilla Mario. I guess you probably could. Uh, oh good, I found the, the thing.
Three gems in the first half. Yeah, I'm actually kind of curious, and I never quite figured out the right answer to this, but... Does Zelda 2 on FDS actually have better music? Or at least more of it? Because the website I would use to determine this apparently is dead now. Which makes me actually pretty dang sad, because it was a good uh, generic music player for all sorts of various consoles. And it showed you the waveforms. The waveforms are the thing I care about most for determining whether or not this makes sense. Different music. Fair. XKCD. Yes, yes, appropriate XKCD is appropriate. I assure you, this took an obnoxiously long time to compile, and I don't know why. And I'm not going to say much more about it, because the... Yeah. But... It is what it is. Just like when we were doing um, FPGA stuff in school, it just takes time sometimes to compile a particular binary. I remember distinctly the FPGA stuff taking like 15 minutes ago. Slightly shorter for this, but... Still lengthy and unpleasant. I'm going to take a lot of damage by getting hit by things that are falling. I'm trying to figure out why I would ever care about that particular critter getting stuck there. Dang you, taco. Well, I think I screwed up the ability to respawn this guy, so I can't get the gem. Dang it. Some of the music is objectively better, some of the music is sadly not as good, but the title screen is objectively better. Alright. It has mandatory mic usage? That would be a problem. That would definitely be a problem. You mean Zelda 1 or Zelda 2? I know Zelda 1 does. I didn't know Zelda 2 had mandatory mic usage. Mandatory mic usage. Yeah, I think you might be thinking of the first game. In retrospect, that was a complete waste of my bomb. Kill Pole's voice without the mic, it just takes forever. I'd believe it. Yeah, I've not played it. Yeah, it was fascinating to watch some of the strategies, especially for like the bosses. Um, the dragon boss was a thing to a thing of beauty to behold, honestly. <laughs> that bot, that dude took no shit off that boss. He's just like, yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna jump on your head until you die. Oh, yeah, that works. Which I find mightily impressive. That's not annoying at all. Okay, there we go. End of level. Jack having that boss. It looks like a fun way to beat it, honestly. Way better than applying all of the buffs and trying to stab it in the face repeatedly. Alright, that's 35. So I guess we'll go see what's in the brink of time now. Good, the door works. To cross this chasm, you must find four colored tokens that are hidden across your adventure. They are usually hidden in plain sight, so keep your scent, keep your eyes peeled. Right, I'm still missing at least a couple of those. 
let's go back to the title menu and look at Evie's message that will tell me where these were. Okay. Okay, I have the one in Ghoul Proof, so that's good. Um, which means I got the one in Prisma. There's one you need to get in the Rainbow Citadel, which I think I got. Which gets me the one in Bullet Birds. Which I think is like the first level. Yep. Jackhammering the Knight on the horse and cheesing him in the corner. Yeah. Um, just all of, like, it just definitely seems like the jackhammering strategy is the way to go with most things. Especially watching, like, the... Um, uh, fighting the blue knights, or the blue iron... Iron knuckles? That's what they're called? So... It was very educational. I am definitely going to look forward to watching some of the speedruns of other things, other request games. Because I can tell you right now, I'm very curious what the actual solution in Magic Circle is instead of ab massively abusing uh, the things I massively abused. Yeah, I need. I need a key. don't know where to get it yet. And I hate all these squirrels. Like, I haven't seen any, like, obvious platforms yet. Which I find to be somewhat vex- Oh, there's an obvious platform. I bet this is a key. That makes sense. Speedrun of Monkey Island. I didn't actually watch a speedrun of Monkey Island, but I did watch that dude's, uh you know, summoning salt style video about the history of Monkey Island speedruns, which eh, it's close enough. I have got to get over here before the squirrels kill me. If I'm lucky, he'll complete one of Monkey Island 2 before I get there. <laughs> then again, he just did something in Quest for Glory, so... Which, you know, it's also an interesting game series. And I did increase my uh, collection size of various adventure games. I own a Mac copy of Myst, which I thought was a PlayStation copy of Myst. Count me as being a dumbass there. A copy of Monkey Island 4. And a copy of King's Quest 7, which isn't one of the best ones, I will be honest. But still. Like the fire strats in that one room? Yes, that was actually elegant. Incredibly elegant. Um, I spent a lot of time asking what the purpose of fire was, and there's the answer, right there. Increased size, yep. Yeah, watching some of the ways that uh, he handled the various horse heads was very interesting, the Medusa heads, was very interesting. Um, not to mention the fact that this was a speedrun where he started off with a bit of a deficit and came back from behind, um, and how negative he was about it. It was mildly amusing. Alright. Climb over the red blood cells, go across, across the yellow blood cells. What's in store for me now? More. Okay. Retro Rumble. Intriguing. I guess this is supposed to be kind of NES style. There's only one background. The colors are definitely different. Yeah, let's go with that. Let's call this NES land. Definitely works for me. Ok, 
Okay, I gotta bounce off this thing to get up there. Nope. I'm learning. I'm learning I should spin jump more often. So retro indeed. Whose run was it? I picked the top one for 100% all keys. His name was relatively short, but I could not tell you what it is at this point in time. I was watching it on my other computer. Um, but apparently for Zelda 2, like, this dude's held the record for like three years, which is impre- Dude, that sounds right. Like, holding a record of a game, and I thought that was the main category because it had the most runs. Um, but it certainly was closest to the category I played, which was effectively all keys and all the things. I don't think I skipped anything of note. Um, and so I watched that one. Nuts. Wait, can I just do this? Oh, you're kidding me. Oh, no, I can't. Oh, that's awful. Hmm. I really want that gem. I think it might just be high enough that I can't pull this off. I am unhappy with this turn of events. Well, hmm. I feel like I can get up here with this critter. There we go. Alright, well that worked. That was irritating and silly, but it worked. You didn't get any damage from the end of Palace 6 to the end. Oh wow. That I did not notice, I will be honest. Right, it's a disco show. You think I'd learn that after a while? But yeah, having a, rec a run like that stand for three years is definitely impressive in my book. Or two years. Regardless of how many years. Having a run stand for years, regardless, is impressive in my book. In a, at least, mildly, uh, mildly popular game. Uh, you know, having it stand in, like, I don't know, Barbie, Dream Castle, whatever, who cares. But Zelda 2 is at least a mildly popular game, as has been demonstrated to me. Oh, for fuck's sake, I did it again. Okay, I know how to do this. Gotta hit him on the very left edge. So not worth the four hits I took for that. Ah. God, I do not like disco shell riding. I'm not good at it. You need to not get hurt by the taco. And then when this disco shell comes, I just want to hit the other disco shell. Like, we don't need to fight. Just chill. Oh, come on. I figured out what to do and then I didn't do it. Uh, oh, my. This time will be different because I'm not going to do the really dumb thing where I don't jump off of that spiky shell. Never mind. God. 
even when I do well. I just gotta be on the bleeding edge, and I need to be moving leftward. I have to feel that was not intent the intended way of doing that bit, but I don't even care. There we go. Can I spin jump on tacos? You can, but you actually have to land on them. That's kind of the key to the whole thing. That's a game I should play on stream, even though it would be terrible because I'm bad at it. I should play Parappa the Rappa, given how often I reference that game. I actually have the soundtrack to Um Jammer Lemmy in my car. No cutting corners, after all. Learning. Groovy. Steb. Jump. Toro! Hit. Hit all three, because I can. Platforming, indeed. It's tricky business. Okay. I've already taken the damage, I might as well. Oh, come on, really? Okay, this is what we're doing. I don't like this. I don't like this trick at all. On the bright side, because of wall jump, I can recover when I fuck it up, inevitably fuck it up. Alright, there we go. Let's respawn the kittens. Bastard. Oh, okay, that was kind of funny, at least. Alright. Yeah, my idea of landing on a thing was, um, optimistic. Let's put it that way. I kind of figured there would be a bonus world like this. Which is good, actually. A bit like Radish Kingdom, it actually makes me play the whole level. I don't think there's going to be uh, checkpoints. At least I think Faro told me there weren't any checkpoints past a certain point. Which is kind of good because then I can get all the gems and finally see like the third gem uh, bonus room. So I feel like every time I've gotten all the gems, I haven't actually successfully gotten the third type of bonus room. I've only gotten the first two. When you're playing a level like this, there's no reason not to get the gems, except for the part where you fuck up that one jump. Stib. Now we wait. Ugh. Seriously? Yeah, I wasn't ready for that. Oh, the bonus is random? I believe so. I believe it spawns a different bonus room depending upon some RNG criteria that I am unaware of. But beyond that, I don't know. And by that I mean Eevee told me that it, it spawns... The, it gives you a random room after you uh, get all five gems and beat a level. Well, closer to fine.
that entirely was an accident at all that it worked. Nuts. Okay. I'm just gonna straight up murder everything that I come across. You know, that I don't need to use as some sort of platform. Right again. Those are hits I really don't want to take at this point. Are you kidding me? I'm so bizarrely good at actually getting that most of the time. Ugh. Well, now I gotta be really careful for the rest of the game. I feel like... I really feel like, uh... Oh, I'm toast. I stabbed the wrong way. <laughs> Do not stab the wrong way. If you step the wrong way, then you are fucked. say I know what I'm doing and then immediately I do that. Okay. Let's go over here. I'm trying to think of any like other cool things that happened, but you know, beyond hanging out with my brother and his sons and stuff, it was pretty much just a nice little little trip. I can't say for that uh, Payne Field is way better than SeaTac at this point. Um, and in fact, I might actually see about, for the flights that I take, that take me to California, flying out of there instead of, uh, the larger airport. Since it was just pleasant. Honestly, they had better chairs. And that makes all the difference. Usually when you stab the wrong way, it's the other guy who gets fucked. Fair enough, Desi. Fair enough. Oh, yeah, that was dumb. I couldn't stick to the wall. I didn't stick to the wall for the wrong reasons. right side, I should end up in that position with a lot more HP this time around. So I'm not uh, making as many dumb mistakes along the way. Plenty of dumb mistakes to make, you know, once I actually get there. But along the way, no. Keeping dumb mistakes to a minimum. Can you just up, jump up there and wall jump off the overhang, or does the wall jump mechanics not work like that? Um, that's a valid question. I will check that out. How are you doing, Silver Fo Fox Flame? I'm not going to put an L there this time. Three L's, too many. Two, just right. I think the right call is just to spin jump on these critters if you actually land on them. <sighs> oh, I guess that's the other thing I did while I was down in California. I went to my, uh, like, favorite Mexican restaurant that I haven't been to in, like, eight years. One of those I-don't-even-care I don't think it's going to result in any doxing me, but I used to go to Tres Hermanos, or Tres Hermanos, in uh, Mountain View, pretty much every, like, Sunday, and get myself a nice wet burrito. 
And you know what? Ten years later, still make a good wet burrito. Not quite ten years. I guess it's more like seven, but still. They still make a good wet burrito. Uh, it was exactly the thing I wanted before going to California Extreme. It was a nice, good, hearty meal. Well, but sleepy. Working a couple hours, but regular sleep eludes you. Fair enough. I definitely know that feeling. Definitely know that feeling. Alright, so your suggestion was to wall jump into the overhang. Never mind, I accidentally got it on the first try, so I'm not going to know anymore if that actually would have worked. I'm just going to take a hit there. I think that's perfectly reasonable between those two obstacles. Oh, I'm already fucked. Oh no, this was a terrible idea. Um. Well, my intent all along was to verify that these were in fact breakable blocks. As part of moderation, as opposed to completely being dumb entirely. It's not completely a cover-up. I actually was curious of whether or not those were breakable. Um, and now I know the answer, which is emphatically yes. And now I have a chance to try it with theory, if I can do it. Yeah, arcade shows are fun. I'll probably go to the one in Tacoma that's happening in October. I don't see any reason not to, because Tacoma's not... or not Tacoma. Uh, Portland. Because Portland's actually not that far away. I could drive, and it's about three hours. I could take the train, it's also about three hours. And, eh, why not? So, they're fun enough. I still would like to be a tourist in Portland at some point. I haven't successfully done that yet. Spent a little bit of time there during, uh... Rose City Comic Con last year. Last year. I didn't really get to, uh... Get anywhere inter- Ah, thing. <laughs> Emphatically, yes. But yeah, I pretty much just saw the con floor. I think I ate at Red Robin, too, which is just like, you know, you can get a burger. It's perfectly adequate. Didn't even get to uh, try any local flavor. My sister assures me that there is a place in Portland that makes uh, both gluten-free and vegan. Was it vegan or vegetarian? I forget. Biscuits and gravy that rival actual biscuits and gravy with, you know, gluten and meat. Which, given her prolicivity... Prol tastes in things seems unlikely to me, but since she says as such, I definitely have to go try that at some point. Definitely on my list of things to do. Those were like a few distilleries. I like checking out distilleries from time to time. They can be interesting places. You can learn fun things. Occasionally you get lucky with a name drop and they might actually like, give you some bonus stuff. I do know some people from Westland that might actually help. Every part of that was terrible. Go check out an art museum or two. I haven't been to an art museum in forever. It's on my list of things to do in the near future. I was going to do it while I was in California, but just, I was tired as hell. Shifted my uh, schedule around a bit for going on the plane, and then shifted my schedule around a bit for doing that Thursday stream. Not to mention taking my bro and his, his family to the airport. They really wanted to uh, make sure they caught their... This is already a bad one. I think I should probably just bail on it. 
Oh, I'm bailing on this. I want to make sure they caught their 5 a.m. flight from Oakland of all places. Oakland's not a big airport, but they wanted to be there exactly two hours early, so I drove them at around 3 a.m., which meant they got back about 4. I slept hard. At least I got into the office on uh, Monday, even though there was only one person in the office. That was kind of nice. Would have been nice to hang out a bit, but uh, he went to lunch early and I didn't, uh... Because I was going to eat the airport. I found such a fascinating way to cheese this that I am so terrible at. Yeah, it was a fun trip to California. I think going, having a shot at going to Payne Field was definitely worth the effort. So I'll see about trying to fly out of there in the future, just because it's nice. And no one ever says an airport is terribly nice. I think there's a line uh, that Douglas Adam wrote that was something on the lines of, no one ever says it's as pretty as an airport. Because, in fact, most airports are kind of aesthetically terrible. Just had to jump one more time. They seem to be trying recently to make them less awful, but they're still kind of terrible. The red zone is for loading and unloading only. Violators will be ticketed and towed. Not to mention LAX is a terrible airport. I suppose I should just say that outright. There are good airports in California. That's not one of them. It mostly suffers from the fact that it was built in, you know, like the 1950s and can't be reconfigured into a better airport because of the road constraints. Oh god, I am just not hitting any of these. Please develop your drinking problem. <laughs> Pours water on head. And don't call me Shirley. Oh, this goes poorly. You just kind of bowl through it, it just always works. There we go. Your channel points are at 666. Nice. I'm certain the screenshot has to do with that. It's this channel point part. Oh, there it is, 666. I see it now. <laughs> Very nice. Not as quite as nice as 6969, but you know. Still works. Oh, that was another weird thing. Uh, there was a Iron Maiden pinball machine that for some reason, instead of playing Iron Maiden, played smooth jazz. I was so utterly befuddled by this that I simply had to walk away after after one game. I really wanted to hear the number of the beast, or hallowed be thy name, and no, I got smooth jazz instead. And as we know from Portal 2, smooth jazz is in fact the funniest of music to make fun of. But it is not what I want when I'm playing the Iron Maiden pinball machine. So. A bit surprising, even. There are two there? Huh. Put a marker there saying that second one basically never spawns. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's any other machines that were like weirdly variant. Uh, oh yeah! 
There was a oh, there was a, a Pac-Man machine that started you on level 255. Um, and the entire reason for doing that is so that you can play the kill screen if you can beat level 255, which is hard. Um, on level 255 of regular old Pac-Man, uh, the ghosts are all really fast. Um, and to add difficulty to it, you collect power pellets, they do nothing. Like, the power pellets legitimately just, they're points. They're dots you have to collect. Ironic modern pit maiden. <laughs> ironic maiden pinball. Uh, exactly, Desi. Exactly. So I got a kill screen and sent it to Fiskbit, which confused him greatly. Um, of course, your score, if you get that kill screen, isn't so insanely low, no one would ever mistake it for an actual achievement, you would hope. But. No promises. Also, if anybody saw the movie Ready Player One, there's the bit where he gets a coin that turns out to be an extra life. In the book, he gets that by playing a perfect game of Pac-Man. Which is a mildly more interesting way of getting it, but certainly not a more um, cinematic way of getting it. Also, never, never read Ready Player One. It's a terrible book would not recommend. Watch the movie. Spielberg made a way better movie than that book ever deserved. That was a bad jump. <sighs> yeah, the sequel's not much better. It's the same damn book. It's about like how Sword Art Online has its first arc and then has its second arc, which is exactly the same. Except somehow more insulting, I have to say. Or at least it felt like a bigger waste of my time in the grand scheme of things. Either way, I'm still amazed that that book became a blockbuster movie directed by Steven Spielberg. Because, dear lord, I cannot imagine anybody reading more than the first, like, I don't know, hours worth of that book without saying, really? Nothing happens. Literally nothing happens! Do they just, like, skip over all the parts where nothing happens when they actually read it? Because, you know, I listened to it on audiobook. And literally in the first two, almost three hours, nothing happens. It's all... You know what's really cool? The 80s. Here, I will now explain to you about these cool things from the 80s. Oh yeah, there's also like this contest thing. I suppose I should tell you because it's the crux of the, the book. But you know, the 80s. Have I told you about the 80s? Huh, that didn't work. Okay, we can still pull this off. That shouldn't have worked, but I'm gonna take it anyway. Yeah, I'm good and fucked. It just didn't spawn. It also occurs to me, I think I'm the only person who uses the light... Uh, ...theme for Twitch. Maybe I should switch. Maybe. Uh. Okay. Like, I feel like I'm like four jumps away from the actual end of the level. I just need to be smart about how I manage my HP at this point. He says as he immediately gets hit. Fine with light themes if it doesn't have bad contrast. Gray text on white is the worst. I agree with that. Gray text on white is the worst. Like, I'd rather even read, like, green on black than uh, gray on white. Not sure who thought that was a good idea, but somehow people seem to think that's good. It's one of the reasons the uh, text thing to the right isn't actually uh, black, on uh, black on white. I actually dim it quite a bit because I figured it would be easier on the eyes. 
Also just looks better, in my opinion, but, you know. Definitely willing to hear out opposing opinions. Okay. Jump on the top. I don't even care. I'm just gonna take a hit here. Almost inevitably, I'm going to take a hit somewhere. Oh. Well. Oh god, no! Oh, I've screwed this up so badly. Whip trend started somewhere in the early 2000s of Mysterious Origin. Mysterious Origins. Yeah, I believe that. Don't know why, though. I mean, it's a bit like the, what, material design that everyone does nowadays, where it's like, you know what you have? A computer with a gigantically wide screen. You know what we should do? Put everything in one column. Which drives me insane. Like, computer screens keep getting wider, but websites keep getting narrower. Why? It's like the opposite of what should be happening. Of course, like, user CSS stuff has long since been deprecated by, like, every major web browser. So. At least some websites keeping the, uh, the classic sort of stylings alive. Even SMW Central 2 isn't that different from, uh, the OG styles. Borders? Who needs borders? Look, position things with tables. Then you then you get borders for free because they come with tables. The tables have borders. Yeah, I'm just gonna take a hit here because I just don't care. I think this is like the place to take a hit. Just to be sure, for this final non-obstacle. Hooray, bonus! Maybe we'll see the third one, which I've yet to see, I think. Definitely seen this one before. Not good at it, but I've seen it before. Remember the old days of web design where you go to a website and there'd be annoying music playing somewhere and you wouldn't know where to shut it off? Yes, yes, I do. We're on the highway to hell. Ooh, it's an actual highway. Um, in fact, one of my favorite websites of oh, hell, Pure Peridian Petrol. <laughs> That's cute. Um, one of my favorite websites from way back in the day actually had that as its sort of standard thing. It would play MIDI music at you while you were trying to, uh, to read it. And it was a scientific publication for some values of scientific and some values of publication. The best part, of course, is the guy actually decided after getting a PhD to resurrect his website. And one of the uh, <laughs> scientific papers that he published was, Does Naruto running make you faster? Shockingly, the answer was no. Oh. That or hide someone hijacking right click with do not steal. Yep. I ran across one of those recently in the um, archive of, what was it, uh, DMOS. Like, here is a website that is a challenge. If you want to get its source code, you could join the ranks of people who have managed to get its source code. And I'm like, I have Wugget. Getting your source code is easy. Oh, it's an iframe. Okay, well, I'll get the frame source code. This is not a challenge anymore. Because I have command line tools and don't have to use IE6. Also, have I mentioned that I love the fact that you can jump on the top of those things? It's been a while since we've seen uh, the Fire Pillars ASM. What's how you doing here is for music? I gotta figure out what your shorter name is. I think I asked you before, and I feel mildly embarrassed that I might have forgotten. Mm. 
need a better system for memorizing things. I have a big feeling those guys are going to respawn and I don't want them to. When you want to use your damage boost, but fail to do so. Oh, transitional, yeah. That was a sign back in the day. People were so proud of XML in their websites. Here, here for, doesn't matter. I'll go with here for. I like that. Of course, if you visit any of the pages on my website, they generally don't care about that sort of thing. I just do HTML. I am admittedly pretty lazy on that front. And see, little to no utility to actually doing HTML 4, 5, 4, 4, whatever. Oh, right! You can't spin jump on these guys. Curses! But, uh, yeah. I mean, the era of handwritten XML is just basically dead now. Nobody really does that unless they're making their own, like, Vaporwave Neo Cities website, which is a bit of a bummer. Because the whole point of, like, HTML was to be relatively easy to handwrite. Um, and now everyone seems to think you need 18 levels of framework to write an HTML page, which isn't true. You just need to write a damn HTML page. React can go eat itself. And may, in fact, eventually eat itself. You know this webpage that I remember from back in the day? Mark Eats AOL. Which was about a, web, a website about a guy who would physically eat AOL discs. Including a somewhat dubious claim that he had managed to eat one with his own butt. But there was an animated GIF demonstrating it, so it's possible he, in fact, did accomplish this feat. In animated GIF form. might still be out there. Maybe one day Mark will achieve his goal of eating the entirety of AOL instead of just random floppy disks and CD-ROM drives. Or CD-ROM... <laughs> disks. Nineties had the most fucked up shock videos? It wasn't even really a shock site. Like, it was basically like, he didn't really eat the... He didn't really eat the disks. Like, this was actually listed on Yahoo as a bit of humor. Anti-AOL humor was its own category on Yahoo for some period of time. Clearly not now, now that Yahoo is not a category engine. It's a has-been website that vaguely exists for some reason. I'm not exactly sure. Possibly to provide mail and bingo to people, but I'm not entirely certain. He was hungry, yes. All right, hold up. Mark eats. This might still exist. Holy shit, it still exists. Someone has a, uh, a mirror of this. Here you go. You guys want to see Mark eating AOL? Now you can. Bam. Like I said, it's pretty damn silly. Though I can't seem to jump properly. Honestly, it was a bit of a bummer when they switched from uh, floppy disks to CD-ROMs because the floppy disks were actually really useful because they were free floppy disks, and as a kid, I needed space. But then they switched to CD-ROM uh, CD disks, and uh, in fact, for a while, AOL was the biggest producer of CD-ROM discs out of anybody. Like, they were basically producing more than, like, anybody else were, were at the time. It's so strange how the economy is around, uh... ISPs have changed. To be fair, it's gotten more expensive and things suck more, so... And I don't have news group access on Comcast, so it probably hasn't been a grand improvement in the grand scheme of things.
Not the news group access really matters to me anymore. I don't really do much in the way of piracy. But it was still nice to have. And the dial-up ISP we had back in the day had it. You suddenly realize what you're up against. No torrents? I really don't torrent much, honestly. Basically, Amazon generally has anything I want to watch in a form I can just pay for it, and it's less of a headache, I'll be honest. I definitely do not appreciate the price of such things, but the ease of use has definitely gotten to a point where I just don't care. Maybe I should, but... Every once in a while, I torrent something that I can't find on a reasonable streaming or um, service, but it happens fairly rarely at this point in time. Like, most of the stuff I care about is now well backed up. And occasionally, it's just, you know, wow. On, uh, on YouTube or, you know, other convenient-ish streaming services. I think what... Especially when no one cares about a given video, honestly. Um, if you want something interesting, a nice little... How would I describe this movie? Um, basically one of the best stop-motion movies of all time, even though it's not mostly about stop-motion. It's about making a stop-motion movie. Um, I would highly recommend The Wizard of Speed and Time to anybody who's just, you know, got an hour or two. It's a silly movie, I will fully admit. But it is... One of the... It has an awful lot of really good stop-motion sequences. Which, I think even when the movie was being made, was kind of on the way out. So, Netflix and Amazon, yeah. I've pretty much gone down to, I want to only pay for two, at most, streaming services. And right now I have Crunchyroll and Disney+, Plus, which I think largely fill what I want. Like, I enjoy watching anime while doing the dishes. Um... And Disney Plus fulfills the need for Disney movies when I need to watch a Disney movie. So, like, I want to, wanted to watch the end of Lilo and Stitch the other day. So, I just pulled it up and watched it. Convenient. Like, the biggest problem with Netflix is, like, they basically lost all of the good movies. And now it's all originals. I don't care about Netflix originals in the slightest. I don't watch enough, like, actual TV to care about watching, I don't know, House of Cards, Stranger Things, like, I just don't, I don't watch that kind of show. It's just not the kind of thing I do. Looks interesting, you have to check it out. Yeah, no, I highly recommend it, especially because, like, the best version is on YouTube right now. There is not a better version. It was never released on DVD, it was only released on, um, Laserdisc. And the version on YouTube is the Laserdisc rip, and it does in fact have the blessing of the both the main character and the uh, director. I don't know. The person who did most of the work for the movie kind of gave it his blessing. So, you can't get quite better than that. When the person who made the movie just said, oh, fuck it, just watch it the YouTube rip. Am I in New Territories? Transperidia Hall. <laughs> oh, that's a cute joke. Level clear! Oh, you see two laser discs on torrents? Huh. But might be slightly better. Could be wrong. But I, I don't get to, to do anything. Brick by brick. Oh. That kind of brick. Completely honest, wasn't expecting this. <laughs> but it is cute. When I think bricks, I think octopuses. Is this the first time we've seen these octopuses? I don't think we've seen the sprite before this moment. Might be wrong, though.
Wall jump. Wall jump. Uh. Yeah, apparently the story of how that movie was made was also a bit of a bummer because a producer ended up stealing... Oh, sorry, some part of the movie and or making it so that it didn't get wider distribution. Which is somewhat ironic given the, uh, the nature of the movie. Hey, I'll take it. Oh. I feel I should recognize where this track's from. I want to say it's from Cool Spot for some reason, but I have no good reason to say that. Yeah, there is with Torrance, is you're gambling with the quality, especially if they re-encode in a shitty way. With streaming service, it's source. I mean, it's somewhat source, it depends. So, a key, uh, so for instance, I wanted to watch an episode of Rescue Rangers. And Disney Plus, in fact, did have the episode of Rescue Rangers. Um, but clearly they're doing something to make the, uh, the video stretched to 16 by 10, 9, whatever number. Um, because... I know for a fact Rescue Ranger is broadcast in, you know, 3, 4-3. Uh, uh, same for The Simpsons. So you're not quite guaranteed to get source quality, you're guaranteed to get something closer to source quality, but you're not guaranteed to get source quality, I think. So there's a lot of hearts in it, surprisingly. You know, I should have just taken the shot earlier. What I get for doing moderator things. Using a private tracker in the torrents or site verified? Well, that's good then. Presuming they actually do good checks. It depends an awful lot of the times. They might just, like, check the very front of the video. No one actually has time to watch two hours of movie, necessarily. Also not really bummed out. I'm kind of digging the, both the aesthetic and the music in this level. Though, admittedly, I probably should try to kill more things with my wand. Rather than getting hit by that for the 15th time. These have high amounts of variance in where they actually go. In terms of their bullet spread. Uh, use YouTube, but eh, sometimes you don't mind ripping the file down. Big subtitles person usually like files that are encoded that way. You'd rather pirate something than buy it again if you already have physical media. No, that's fair. That's fair. Spamming. No, hardly anyone's talking. It's fine. Now, I definitely get that. The feeling like, I already bought this. Why do I need to get this on a streaming service when I already own it? Which is an awkward question for decent number of people. That's Because really, the difference between make, between a backup you made yourself and a backup someone else made isn't that material, but for some reason, copyright law considers it important. Like, the whole, like, oh, you're only supposed to, you know, use your own ROM rips. I'm like, yeah, I could do that. Technically speaking, I had an opportunity to rip my own copy of SMW. But I didn't. Because I didn't feel the need to. Uh, Fistbit once brought over his uh, ROM dumper, which is why I had an opportunity to try and do that if I so felt the need to. But I didn't, so. That worked. But yeah, co software copyright stuff is weird. 
that's the long story short. Did I dump that arcade board? What? I do not own any arcade boards. As far as I know. It's vaguely possible I bought one and forgot about it, but I don't think I did. You might be thinking of a different Patrick. Doing a lot of VHS stuff. Anime box sets were not cheap. No, they were not. Oh, you meant like a joke for legally owning? Yeah. No, I don't think I own any arcade boards. I own a lot of other random crap. It's been on my list of, like, random things to do is just take pictures of some of the random crap I own. <laughs> because I own a lot of random crap. But... But at least I delete my ROMs after 24 hours, because that's what, that's what, that's what uh, the EU requires. Such a weird thing that websites always specify. You gotta delete them after 24 hours for evaluation purposes only. It's like, no, that's not how any of this works. Violating copyright is violating copyright regardless of how long you do it for. That's just how copyright works. Unless it's under fair use, which is a affirmative defense as opposed to a, like, active... Like, fair use is a weird defense because you can't, like, actively use it. You can only use it if you're on the defensive side. So. Much as I'd like to believe an awful lot of the things we're doing are fair use, I know for a fact they are not. But the nice thing about copyright is you don't have to enforce it if you don't feel like it. Which is pretty much what Nintendo does to us. Then Nintendo got caught downloading their own ROM from the internet because they lost their... Yep. Well, that they could have easily ripped a, a ROM copy out of, SM, like, out of an SMW card. It, like, easily could have done that if they felt the need to. Like, quite literally, they could have just sent an intern over to, like, Super Potato or something and said, hey, get us a... Uh, American copy of SMW or what have you like there's enough used game stores in Japan and Akiba that they easily could have ripped a copy if they felt the need to but they didn't it's their IP to begin with so they don't have to do that after all who's gonna sue them the person who ripped it no the only person who can sue Nintendo for violating Nintendo's copyright is Nintendo, and they're not going to do that, because that's stupid. You can't even, like, prove a point that way, it's just dumb. So. Interesting the Twitch channels get away with playing Star Trek and ask for donations to boot. Oh, yeah, like, playing... Yeah, I hate those channels. I mean, I enjoy watching them the entire time, but, like, the whole, I'm going to play this series I picked up on a torrent site, and... Hey, please, please subscribe to my channel thing. He is a little bit galling. On the other hand, I do like watching Most Extreme Elimination Challenge. So, I, I could kind of find it tolerable, but still. Really wish there were more translated episodes of Takashi's Challenge, or Castle, but there aren't, it seems. There's like one. There we go. Finally back here. Whatever. Yeah, nothing wrong with that indeed. Like, I gotta be really close to the end. Yes! Brick World is over! This is different!
That was terrible. Wait, what? Uh, that works too. Japanese broadcasting channels has kind of cracked down on fan subs for those shows. That's a shame because like they're not going to translate them anyway. And some of those are like have a decent amount of interest in the United States. Um, Game Center CX is really good. But ball. Uh, Game Center CX is really good. If you've never watched Game Center CX, it's, it's totally worth watching. At least pick an episode where you've already where you um, know the game. The Lemmings episode is actually really good. Now I think about it. Uh, Arno is actually surprisingly good at uh, what was it? puzzle games. It didn't take him long to figure out Mansion of uh, Lost Souls, which is surprising to me, given that game is a bit obtuse. Um, but yeah, it's kind of one of the great shames of uh, translation, fan, and otherwise. It's just, it's a whole lot of wasted time when they could just, like, hey, you guys are already doing this, why don't we just pay you, and, like, we'll put it on our streaming service, and, I don't know, we'll give you a cut. It seems like a way better model than whatever the hell we're doing nowadays. Like, I appreciate the fashion... The, the fashion. The, um... Like, how fan subbers are so passionate about it. But at the same time, like, money solves a lot of problems. Oh, God! That is so much lag. And there's an arm. Arm and a lag. Oh, it's the dust thing. Never mind. I got a trophy. Hmm. Well, that didn't help. Can I stab balls? Yes, I can. If you stab the balls, they die. It solves problems. I expected a much... I expect it to be low ball. Damn it. Well, that sucked. All right. You know, I kind of like this, um, one of those didn't, two didn't spawn for some reason. I kind of like the aesthetic of an, an awful lot of hat that an awful lot of hacks go for, where they're like, you know, after the special in the special world, we're just gonna kind of give up on continuity. It doesn't really matter. We're just gonna go f do whatever the hell we want. I of course like that. God, I'm not making very far into this level at all. Much as I'd like to go run the fan in the other room, I was looking at some of the levels from last stream when I was here, and realized that somehow, the, despite the fact that I couldn't hear it, the fan was quite clearly audible. On stream. Even though it was behind a closed door and down a hallway, which is disconcerting, I will be honest. God, I hate this section. a song from a Turtles uh, game, or at least I've made that assertion on a different, multiple times at this point. <sighs> Stab. Don't even care. I just don't want to have to deal with that ink football jump. Of course, he responds. Don't should go into the cup. That'd be cute if that was actually a pipe. Okay, 
was a nice shell while it lasted. <sighs> Oof. Still warm in here. Seattle, yeah, we're still dealing with heat, unfortunately. Would be nice if we finally got over it, but we're not. There we go, that's a strat that'll work. I did get the wrong spot when I put down that marker previously. I'll have to double check. Somehow I haven't gotten hit yet. Definitely feel like having uh, <laughs> some sort of useful projectile here is making this whole thing a lot easier. Mistakes were made. I mean to duck, I meant to press Y, but apparently I didn't do it fast enough. To be completely honest, I'm really bad at that sort of jump. I'm just gonna get hit here, aren't I? Oh no! I'm just gonna get slammed to the ground and die. I think what I have to do there is, like, go try to respawn the arm. So I only have to deal with the, uh... The ball. Yeah, I think I just mistook that spot for a different spot. It's not like more than being hit by random balls. Ball and G. Yeah, because you have to you have to land on a ball there. You cannot bowl through that, unfortunately. I guess what I could do is I could bring a shell and do a shell jump. Like, not even a complicated shell jump, it's a regular shell jump off of the pit. That might be the smart move. be useful later, just not useful now. As long as I run away from that ball. That ball is scary. Yeah, I'm thinking about that, uh, the shell strat. I think that might just be the way to play it. Well, that kind of worked. Oh, I didn't trust myself. Alright, still works. As long as I don't get shoved into the ground, that works. Okay. I do not care about power-ups, I just want health. Thank you. Whatever. Shoot. Not a fan of that. I wonder how many exits I'm at now. I wonder if the UI of the uh, interface is updated to state how many I'm at now that I think about it. Let me check, it's been a while. 
Okay, so 44 out of 46. So I'm actually not that far away from the ending. It's like this level, and then the next level. And possibly one more, because that's how exits work. Okay, I can live with that. I'd like to get back to a few smaller hacks at this point. Maybe pick up another larger, but not as uh, annoying hack, at least. Not this annoying, but just like it's big. It's got its moments where I do not enjoy it. Like right there. And thank god I didn't get got there. Holy shit, I do not like that thing. Ball. Learning. Please, please don't kill me. I feel like that thing has killed me before. In a past many lives. Almost killed him. Really? Come on. There we go. Safe. Mm. Really wish I hadn't done that. That worked. No, I'm killing you. I don't I don't want you doing things. So I feel like I'm at the very end of this. go up here, we can, like, despawn all the balls, drop down the hole, there we go, bonus, indeed. I don't know why we're suddenly getting in these, but this is the one I was looking for. Alright, that works. <sighs> Cosmic Apex. Hmm. I'm thinking. 3 a.m. Do I want to try to go for broke and finish the last level? Oh, yeah, it's the last level. We should go for broke and try to finish the last level. Ooh, DuckTales. That's not a wall. Makes a decent amount of sense. Hey, Uncle Scrooge. See how big this level. Okay, that's a thing that happens. Scary thing that happens, but it happens. Ow! Did a stupid re grab jump off of the squirrel. I have to refight Buckethead. I can tell you right now, it's gonna go to another, <laughs> another stream. But nothing else, at least get past this point. Oh, I got pincered by my own greed. I did a lot of damage and gotten very little done in exchange. Jump. 
Yeah, I took less damage just running through that than trying to be smart about it. It's elevators. It's elevators. <laughs> These ladders are definitely reminding me of uh, Mario 2. Oh god. I wanted the re-grab button, but I didn't do it in the right order. I jumped into the spikes. I'm definitely debating at this point whether or not I want to try and complete this now, but I don't know how much more there is, right? Like, if I just beat the level, is it over? Like, I trust my, my script to tell me exactly how many exits there are in this game. It's supposed to be a nifty thing to ask Faro if he's still around since he actually has beaten this game and knows how long it is. Or if Eevee's around, which seems equally unlikely. Come on! Get over there. Just take it. One step at a time until the saws catch up to you. Learning. I don't know why I thought I could jump on that. Especially because I didn't actually jump on it. Okay. Interesting facts about DuckTales. DuckTales was... Disney's first attempt at doing feature-length, i.e. movie, style animation for a cartoon, uh, for a TV cartoon. Which is why it's so dang high quality, honestly. Um, they did eventually the rest of the Disney afternoon stuff, which is reasonably close in quality. I'd say that DuckTales is probably still the Undisputed King, but... Things like Tailspin and uh, Rescue Rangers are pretty close. But you can compare DuckTales the series to DuckTales the movie and see that it's not terribly different. Though admittedly I definitely prefer the series to the movie, the movie was kind of lame. Capcom, meanwhile, made a truly excellent game of DuckTales. Though initially, they didn't seem to understand the IP, bizarrely enough. And so they made it so uh, Scrooge's most important things in life were Dream and Friends. Which anybody who's watched DuckTales can tell you right now, he doesn't give two shits about Dream and Friends. Mistakes were made. <sighs> I'm debating. There's gotta be like a final, final boss to this. Like, I don't think Eevee would just have it end on a level. But once again, if someone actually knows if this is actually where it ends, I would not mind knowing that information at this point in time. I sure as hell don't know. Don't re-grab. Just message Faro and see if he knows. But I'm gonna guess this level is quite long. Look at the positioning on these ladders. Taco was 
In fact, the Japanese word for octopus. Which means you should be careful when ordering tacos in Japan, because you might not get what you expect. Might still be delicious, though. You never know. There was only ever, like, one meal in Japan that I really regretted getting, and it was, uh, I think it was some okinoki, ok okonomiyaki, um, that I didn't know what I was getting with it, and it turned out that I had ordered sea snail. And, yeah, it turns out I don't like sea snail. Didn't know that before that moment. But I know now, I do not like sea snail. Uh, I think about Okino uh, Okonomiyaki is it's um, made on a... It's actually served on a hot plate. And by that I mean like an actual like little griddle. Um, and I swear, it's one of the very few times in my life where I have been worried about like actually vomiting in the restaurant. Because worse comes to worse, like, you know, you go vomit in the bathroom, vomit outside, no one cares. Chewy, unpleasantly so. Um, you know, you vomit outside, you vomit there, but if, if I'd thrown up on the hot plate, it would have been cooking the vomit, and that would have been terrible for everybody involved. I think I did, in fact, manage to keep it down, but it was it was a close thing. Um, I've got a pretty strong stomach. Either way, long story short, sea snails, don't eat them. Or sea slugs, I forget what it was. I don't know what it was, actually. I don't, it's not a matter of forgetting. I legitimately do not know what I ordered. I pointed to something on the board and thought that looks okay to me. And I learned that it was not okay to me. But, uh, but yeah, important lessons. To be fair, smiling and pointing at things that largely worked in Japan, you know, even after that, still worked pretty well. Give my Japanese is complete crap. I think a guy on a, I think I vaguely recall a train conductor making fun of me because I think I said I don't understand Japanese and he's like, you don't understand Japanese in Japanese, that doesn't help us at all. Uh, oh. Cool, got past all the cat ads. Optimistic about this level now. I've gotten two rooms in and cannons. Less optimistic. something was already bouncing on. That's why it didn't bounce there. Interesting. I'm not convinced my strategies are getting all that better as we're going along. I guess these are getting mildly better. Okay, that wasn't great. That wasn't great either.
And I suddenly wonder if this is a hooded edge port, because it suddenly goes into like a Mega Man sort of thing right here. If you remember, the pillars aren't solid. Unlike the Pillar Men. Pleasantly lukewarm. Looking forward to when this heat will abate. Uh, but not till next week, apparently, at least. It does remind me I also need to do my four job fiesta. <laughs> I'm so far behind on all the things I wanted to get done because of the travel and or getting sick. All right, well. The problem is I need the pupper and the comet to line up. Because that works. I was safe. I could have stood there a bit longer. It's kind of intriguing that I can do that, but I don't think it's a terribly useful strategy in the grand scheme of things. fuck-up leads to many greater fuck-ups. Silly squirrels. Moose and squirrel. Okay. Now for something you're really gonna like. Pro probably not. Okay. Leaping on the fireballs is always safer than not. Somehow. Okay. Do not like the knife cats. Alright, well, back here with one shot at it. Intriguing enough, yeah, intriguingly enough, I have to assume that there is a boss fight at the end of this because there are no gems. I can do the... DKC2 ones, but apparently these elude me. Alright. 
much as it's gonna irk me, I think that the best way to handle this might, in fact, be to come back tomorrow. Because, just gotta do it. Yeah, I think that, that that's the smart move here, unfortunately. No, I don't think it's a smart move. We're gonna go in more. We do dumb things here. But yeah, it's almost 3 a.m. Or slightly past 3 a.m. now, I suppose. And I do, in fact, need to get a good night's sleep. Get some more work done tomorrow. More video games can occur. Let's see about trying to finish up this magic circle so I can get started on Zelda 1. Oh, I'm terrified of that. Oh, that works. Yes, yes I did. In fact, Faro, I have a question for you. How much more game is after this? Is there another boss, or do you just beat the level and it's over? It's an actual useful question for me to have to ask. the last level there is no boss? Okay. Alright. Well then. If there's no boss, I'm gonna give this a, a lot more tries. Oh, there's two pups in here. That doesn't usually happen. Level's really fucking long. Alright, maybe not then. And I'm rubbish at cannons. Mm. This level's really long. I'm thinking about this. Yeah, I think the wise thing might be to pick this one up tomorrow then, knowing it's long. Level engine length, oh my. I mean, I guess aside from uh, this defrag, I haven't played any other bits of his work. Oh, I'm just failing for the sake of failing at this point. And there's only one level in this defrag that felt like it was too damn long. Um, and that was the Celeste-inspired level, whose name eludes me because it's been, you know... I guess a year and a half since I played it. The reason I know that is because I think that um, this defrag was the first moderation that used my YouTube system. Because prior to that, I was using the Twitch marker system, which was terrible, comparatively. Yeah, I'm not focusing well enough. To... If not, just a bit longer. Oh my. Alright. Well then, I think that that is a auspicious omen. Definitely an auspicious omen to uh, to handle the rest of this tomorrow, then. Do one more to see if I can get through this first section without taking any damage, though. And then, upon this next death, I think we're gonna find someone to raid. Right. Need to stab the taco before it invokes the block. Really wish you could spin jump on these critters. I foresee myself spending a lot of time in this level. I got a duck. Basically, I'm in about as worse, worse shape as I've ever been to get through this part. Took you 30 minutes or so. Fair. Mm. I don't think I've been at it for 30 minutes, but I also don't think 
Yeah, one more. But I'm also definitely fading. One of the downsides of streaming after work and all of that is definitely does not get me my most awake. to you 35 minutes. Was that your entire time spent in this, or how long it took you to beat it on the run where you succeeded? Because those are very different things. Ah. Really would have preferred to take the damage here. Entire time? Okay, that's not too bad then. I've definitely taken longer on that one level engine level, the Celeste one I'm thinking of. It took multiple streams to beat it. Partly because there's a little bit of there was some jank in the level, but partly because it was just really friggin' long and clearly inspired by the uh, getting over it aesthetic. Oh, I think you have to follow. I didn't read any of that because that was the message that is supposed to show up at the end of the game and I'm not going to read it. <sighs> Cannons. I didn't take damage. I really expected to take damage. I also kind of expected there wouldn't be another cannon. Well, this is the best progress I've made in a while. How's making that noise? Oh, these guys. I prefer to stay on top of this. Right, the blue ones are killable. Nuts. And now I have no spin jumping options. Do you want me to save you some time or something just so you don't need to check this level because you've already done it? Uh, what? As in, I don't need. I don't quite get what you're getting at, I'm gonna be honest. Do know I shouldn't be doing that, though. But I definitely need to beat the level on my lonesome as part of moderation, if that's what you're getting at. There's a shell jump for a bonus? Oh! That's intriguing. I'm curious about that. Said the man who immediately got... Oh, wait. <laughs> Extra power-ups? Oh, okay, I'm definitely interested in that. I'm curious where that is. Is it past the cannon section? Because, like, I don't think I've seen any shells. There's one shell I've seen. Like, I wonder how many, like, random secrets I've missed. I feel like I could pull off at least one shell jump in this. All this nonsense. I'm not the best at shell jumps, but I can do one or two, maybe. And plus, like, the downside is, what do you do? I failed the shell jump, probably. Hate those spawns. 
past the cannon section, gives you a shell block right before. Okay. I'll have to keep that in mind. That was dumb. That was really dumb. <laughs> tired. And it's 3 o'clock. Got on the run, we beat the level. That makes a lot of sense. Getting a few extra power-ups definitely could make a difference if things are destructible. Uh. Yep. silly things at this point. Like hanging out in the spike pit. At no point in time did I need to hang out in the spike pit. Take off too? Alright, sleep well, Faro. I imagine I'm not going to be much, much behind you. In fact, very certain of it. Yep, very certain of it. Let's find someone to raid. I'm tired. As <laughs> much as I want to keep going, I don't think I can. Let's see who's doing things. No. What was that? No. No. Close. Am I playing Mario? A lot of people doing a lot of things. No one playing Mario. Yeah! Thanks! Let's go back to the level, because it's got better music than the... ...the bit there. Um... Yeah, I think we'll just raid him. He's a good guy. We're gonna raid Psycho. Yep, Psycho. 319... or 30... 103. I'm tired. That it works. Um, just say hi. He's getting started today. Nothing too, nothing too fancy. Um, yeah, and I'll be back tomorrow night at approximately midnight PDT. Maybe a little bit before, depending upon what I get done tomorrow. We'll see. But we'll get back to this. We'll do more of this. I'll probably try and pick up like some small moderations in the meantime. Once I finish this or play some BLDC or I don't know, find something else to do. But anyway. Uh, so thank you all for watching. I'm a lovely audience. I'm tired. Have a good rest of your day, good sleep, good whatever. I will uh, see you all next time and say hi to Psycho for me. I'm gonna push the button now. See you later.